My name is Thomas Denny, and I'm a stained glass artist. That's a very peculiar little world in its own right, which in my case has emerged from a life as a painter. with these windows for St. Catherine's Chapel at Leicester Cathedral. I would like to feel that the bigger theme is a universal theme. Not that I would want to deny the meaning and significance of a particular life, the life of Richard III, for example, but I would like to feel that that life and the work of art that has emerged from pondering on it has more universal application. Even though I've made windows for extraordinary buildings over years, I don't feel any less daunted. I'm working on painting, which is a misnomer in many ways. The peculiarity of stained glass is the subdivision of processes. Here, much of the work has already happened. I have made innumerable shifts of colour already by way of acid etching two layers of coloured glass. One of the lovely byproducts of acid etching is that one ends up with a kind of fragile and damaged surface that's so very nice to do things to with paint. You can see here, for example, that the surface is completely glassy and untouched there, but kind of pitted and acided there, so that there are different surfaces that give different possibilities to the paint. The paint sits on them in a different way. Something rewarding for the eye to explore. There's a whole range of different kinds of tools and processes one can use from line like this where individual marks can be applied to the surface using areas of tone and working them in with the badger brush. And then the other thing, of course, is taking off the paint again. It's in many ways what one sees with glass paint is the light rather than dark lines. It makes more sense to work back to light. And so putting on areas of paint like this can then be cut back or rubbed back to get to the underlying light. Much of the drawing can be done like so, with a, a kind of needle on a stick, which can cut through the paint and make specifically light marks through the dark. first thing I would do in a window is decide on the glass to be used. These windows are going to be largely red and yellow gold. I can do that by using two layers often, sometimes one layer, of flash glass. It's clear glass with a thin layer or flash of colour on the surface and one can then attack that colour by acid etching to lighten it or to remove it. And with two layers of glass, almost infinite colour possibilities are there. This area I'm working on just now, a tumbling of shapes below this central figure group, is to do with the idea of the residue or remnants of a life or a history, fragments of paper scrunched up and torn with 
a suggestion of lettering and I'm trying to make marks that convey the fluid and beautiful quality of 15th century calligraphy without being exactly legible. So it's as though one seeing unreachable fragments of writing that are to do with the life of such a one as Richard III. A group of figures above is um, one in despair, a broken man seeking comfort, very much as Richard III wrote in prayers that he was yearning to be relieved from the burdens and agonies of his life. There comes a time when I feel that I have finished a window and um, that time comes when the final firing has been done. Usually the glass is fired two or three times before it's right with paint and then another layer of paint and silver stain. And when I decided that it's ready to go off, then it returns to Patrick Costello, who first knew the glass in its raw state when he cut it, perhaps eight months previously, and now it returns to him ready to be leaded up, which I'm not able to do myself. I feel that the collaboration I have with Patrick is a very good balance in that the aesthetic decisions about the leading are made by me, but the physical craftsmanship is done by him. The leading does one thing that enhances the window. It intensifies the light within the glass. Once the window is leaded, light is only coming through color, not through the little slithers of space between. And then there's another phase, a very alarming one, a fixing, which we often do ourselves, but not always. And at Leicester, the fixing is going to be done by a stained glass colleague called Ben Sinclair. And I say alarming, the alarming aspect of fixing is not the doing of it, which is, has its own nerve-wracking qualities. Will someone drop a panel on their way up the scaffolding? No, what's alarming is how terrible a window can appear when it first starts to enter its space. And the reason for that is that when, say, two or three panels of a light, which is one of the sections of a window, have gone in, those two or three panels are surrounded by the empty space, the daylight of the rest of the window. And even though I've seen this many times, I still feel a terrible anxiety about making the window too dark. Help! There it is. It's going in. And look at it. It looks so black and grimy. And that's how it'll look until the moment when the final panel goes in and the light is closed down, the mortar is removing any glints from the sides and it's finished. So it's actually very difficult to see how it's going to be until the end. I think in many ways a prayer that Richard himself wrote sums up the theme of the window. Most merciful Jesus Christ, as thou didst wish to relieve those burdened with sore afflictions, to redeem the captives, to free the imprisoned, to bring together those who are scattered, to restore the contrite in heart, to comfort the wretched, and to console those who grieve and mourn. Deign to release me from the affliction, temptation, grief, infirmity, poverty, and peril in which I am held, and give me aid. Extend thy arm to me, pour thy grace over me, and free me from all distresses and griefs by which I find myself troubled. I ask thee, most gentle Christ Jesus, to keep me and defend me 
from all evil and from my evil enemy and from all danger present, past and to come. O Lord, hear me by all thy benefits for which I give and return thee thanks. I ask thee, O most gentle Jesus Christ, to save me from all perils of body and soul and after the course of this life to bring me to thee, the living and the true God.